OK, um, I think we'll start the introductions and then we can let, let people in as, as we um, go through the thing. Um, so good evening, I'm David Charlesworth. I'm communications manager here at Greater Cambridge Partnership and the Water Beach to Cambridge Bus Base, one of the projects I work on. I'll be chairing tonight's meeting. I'm joined by two colleagues, um, Amy Bardet, who is from our uh, transport consultants Atkins and um, has been working on the technical detail around the Water Beach to Cambridge Busway and the project Greater Cambridge Partnership project manager for the Cambridge to uh, Water Beach Busway, Paul van der Bolt. Uh, we have a we're also joined by colleagues Isabel and James who will be supporting with the, the tech at the back end of the, the things, back end of the presentation. Um, the format for tonight's present uh, uh, webinar is that we'll be doing a short presentation running through the key points of the um, the key points of the proposals. And at the end of the as the end of the presentation, we'll open up for questions. Um, if you wish to ask a question, please put your hand up with the, 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 the it within uh, the teams, the little yellow hand, and I'll take them in order that they're up. Or if you're feeling a bit shy, you can put something into the chat um, um, chat function, and we'll try to answer that as well. Um, so um, I'll just say, um, as always, uh, normal rules of behaviour uh, pertain into into this. So um, any unruly behaviour, and you may we may exclude you from the, the meeting. So if we can all keep it, uh, I know there are some really strongly held views on this, but if we can keep it all civil and polite, we can all have a more informed meeting. Um, so I think that's the introductions over with. I think a couple more people have joined. So Amy, I think we're adding over to you for you to run through a presentation. Thanks, David. I'll just uh, share my screen. Bear with me one second. Has that come Thanks. through? I can see that, yes. Brilliant, thank you. OK, good evening, everyone. So just a brief agenda um, of the session today and of the, my presentation. So I'll just run through briefly um, the consultation and what we're consulting on. Um, I'll then th run through more of the detail for the Water Beach to Cambridge Better Public Transport and Active Travel Project. And then I'll run through the more details on the proposals for a new park and ride. So the, through the consultation, we'll be asking your views on two projects. So the first is the options for a Water Beach to Cambridge busway and then active travel improvement, improvements associated with that. And then secondly, uh, the options for a new park and ride site near to Water Beach. Um, the consultation is currently open and runs until the 24th of March. So the following slides provide an overview of the route options that are being consulted on for the busway element of the consultation, as well as the associated active travel improvements. To give a bit of background, the overall project aim is to deliver a new high quality and segregated public transport route between Water Beach, Newtown and Cambridge. The route will also facilitate new infrastructure for active travel and link with routes that are already in development. Providing these better public transport and active travel connections will connect homes with places of work and study and make sustainable journeys more attractive, leading to improved air quality. To develop options for the project, we've been through a four step process. So step one consisted of establishing the need for a new public transport scheme on the corridor. A study into the future of the A10 in 2018 found that the road suffers from significant congestion during rush hours, particularly at the Cambridge end. This congestion will only get worse once Water Beach Newtown is built. The so key to solving this congestion would be building a new public transport scheme between Water Beach and Cambridge, which would help instill sustainable travel habits from the start. As part of step two, in 2019, we started to come up with a long list of options for a new public transport scheme. We held workshops with stakeholders and a four week online engagement period so that the public and stakeholders could share their views on the project in its early stages. Together with technical work, the outcomes of the engagement fed into a long list of over 50 possible routes for the new scheme. Options were sifted and assessed, which resulted in some options being discounted. This process resulted in the creation of four broad corridors that the busway could use a Western corridor, a Central corridor, an A10 corridor and an Eastern corridor. So the four options are shown on the plan on the left hand side of this slide. In autumn 2020, we ran a public consultation on the new route for the busway, which presented the four options for feedback. 
feedback from the public showed that the consultation uh, showed that just over half of respondents supported the proposal to build a new busway between the new town at Water Beach and Cambridge. However, the route options that ran through Water Beach Village were strongly opposed due to the proximity to housing and the perceived impacts on the local community. In 2021, following further technical work, a short list of two of the four options were selected. These were the Western option and following the feedback from the public, a revised version of the central option. And those two options are shown on the right hand side of the slide there. So as part of step four, to develop the options further, in 2022, we held more stakeholder workshops on the details of the two options. Together with that feedback and further technical work, we identified three specific routes within each of the corridors. These six routes were then measured against a range of technical and environmental criteria. The exercise identified one route within the revised central corridor and one route within the western corridor. The consultation seeks seek views on these two options. The next two slides present details of the revised central and western options. So these maps are presented within the consultation brochure and more detailed mapping, um, a snippet of which is shown on the left hand side of that slide, is available on the GCP website if you would like to look at specific sections of both routes in more detail. So looking firstly at this revised central option and taking it from south to north, the revised central option starts at the Cambridgeshire guided busway to the west of the A14 underpass. The route continues north to Milton Road. It is proposed that buses will run along Milton Road and Butt Lane to serve Milton Park and Ride. Milton Road and Butt Lane between the route and Milton Park and Ride are proposed to be upgraded. This, route, this upgrade applies to both route options um, and more detail on the upgrade is, is provided later in this presentation. From Butt Lane, the route continues north crossing Land Beach Road via signalised crossings. The route crosses uh, mere way to the west of the A10. At this point, the active travel infrastructure alongside the busway route connects to mere way to allow users to cross the A10 via the active travel bridge being provided by Urban and Civic. The busway route continues north across the A10 via the Water Beach Newtown Southern Access Roundabout. Within Water Beach Newtown, the route is proposed to run on dedicated public transport infrastructure to connect to the new Water Beach station. Connections will also be possible through the new town to Cambridge Research Park for journeys to continue on north towards Ely on the A10. The proposals within Water Beach Newtown are consistent across both options and the project team will continue to work with the developers of the new town to develop these designs further. So moving on to the western option, this starts uh, in, at the southern end in a similar location to the revised central option, connecting to the existing Cambridgeshire guided busway to the west of the A14 underpass. It crosses Milton Road via a signalised crossing further west than the central option and continues north to the west of Land Beach before crossing Cottenham Road and Green End via signalised crossings. To the east of Green End, the active travel infrastructure alongside the busway route connects to Mere Way to allow users to cross the A10 via the active travel bridge. The busway again continues east across the A10 via the Water Beach Newtown Southern Roundabout and arrangements within the Newtown are the same as those presented for the revised central option. So these next two slides provide a comparison of the two options. So in terms of journey time, the Western route option offers a quicker journey if services do not divert to Milton Park and Ride due to the directness of the route. Both routes are segregated from general traffic for the majority of their routes and both cross the existing road network four times at signalised junctions. The signals will provide priority for buses along the corridor to help ensure reliable journeys. The estimated cost of both options are comparable with the Western route cost estimated slightly higher than the revised central route as a result of the additional upgrade to Milton Road and Butt Lane. In terms of journeys, both options are predicted to lead to a reduction of approximately 2,200 daily person trips by car in 2041. 
The revised central option is predicted to generate a higher level of bus and park and ride use, as well as active travel use. This is predominantly as a result of its proximity to the existing settlements along the corridor, therefore offering greater connectivity for existing users of the corridor. This image shows a typical indicative cross section of the busway corridor and this, this cross section applies to both options. The width of the active travel infrastructure varies along the corridor, depending on the proximity to other active travel routes, including the mere way. Cross sections are referenced on the more detailed drawings on the Greater Cambridge Partnership website to show where the active travel infrastructure varies. The busway will be separated from the active travel route by a verge. The extent of the slopes and drainage either side of the route will vary depending on the location within the corridor. It is assumed that the busway will be optically guided, as shown by the, by the road markings in the middle of each lane. Therefore, the infrastructure will not be physical guidance that is used for the existing Cambridgeshire guided busway. This screenshot from our project animation shows a typical cross section of the proposed upgrade to Butt Lane. The animation is available to view on the consultation website. The upgrades to Butt Lane apply to both route options. The road will be widened to allow easier bus movements and a widened shared use path on the southern side will provide improved active travel journeys. A verge will also separate pedestrians and cyclists from the carriageway. So we'll now we'll, uh, look through the options for a new, new park and ride site. So the new park and ride site near Water Beach would serve the new town, Water Beach and Land Beach, as well as letting vehicles off the A10 earlier in their journeys towards Cambridge. We've gone through a three stage option identification process, which has culminated in three options being presented in this consultation for feedback. Step one consisted of the identification of a number of zones for a potential park and ride site. These zones were east of the A10, either near or in Water Beach, Newtown, directly adjacent to the A10, between Cambridge Research Park and Water Beach, and west of the A10, to the west of Green End and Cambridge Research Park. These three zones were put through a high level assessment, looking at the benefits and impacts of operating a park and ride site on the areas. The conclusion of step one was that the zone directly adjacent to the A10 was taken forward as the optimum zone. As part, as part of step two, six specific sites, broadly the same size as Milton Park and Ride, were identified within the preferred zone and they formed the site long list. As part of step three, the six sites were looked at in more detail, including uh, looking at aspects such as greenbelt designation, flood risk and transport access. From this, we've identified the top three performing sites, and these are the ones that we're asking for feedback on as part of the consultation. So Park and Ride Site A is located to the east of the A10, to the north of Water Beach, Newtown. Park and Ride Site B is located to the west of the A10 and Water Beach, Newtown, and is accessed off Green End. Park and Ride Option C is located to the west of the A10, to the north of Denny End Road and to the west of Water Beach, Newtown. All three options for park and ride could connect with busway services and sites B and C directly with the busway options themselves. We will ensure that the sites are accessible by active travel modes as well as vehicles. High level access arrangements have been identified for each park and ride for further consideration. For park and ride site A, there's two potential access options. The first option is that buses and cars could access the site from a new roundabout off the A10. Option uh, two involves buses accessing the site from within the Water Beach New Town and cars accessing the site from a new roundabout on the A10. For park and ride site B, there's one access option where buses access the site from Water Beach New Town Southern Roundabout and cars could access the site from Green End. For park and ride site C, there are again two access options. Buses and cars could access the site from the Water Beach Newtown Southern Roundabout. And the second option is that buses could access the site from the Water Beach Newtown Southern Roundabout and cars could access the site from the A10 at Denny End Road. 
We are also seeking feedback on these options and their accesses to feed into future technical work. As the options for the park and ride site are developed, we will also be considering what facilities are included. We would like to hear feedback on these facilities and any others that you would like to see as part, um, as part of the park and ride as part of this consultation. So in terms of next steps, following the consultation, we will analyse responses and integrate them in with the outcomes of ongoing technical work. We're aiming to submit the outline business case to the Greater Cambridge Partnership Executive Board later in 2023, along with the recommendation of a preferred option. Our current programme indicates that the start of construction is likely to be in late 2025 or early 2026. So, so that is uh, come to the end of the presentation. Um, David, do you want to open up for questions? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks very much, Amy. Thank you. Um, so that was the presentation. We've covered uh, a summary of where we are with the project, what the consultation is about, the two options for the preferred routes that we're consulting on, and the three sites for the park and ride. And Amy's then set out what the next steps are. So now this is your opportunity to ask myself, Amy and Paul, um, any questions you have about the, um, about the thing. So someone who's called Tony Guest. So we can unmute you this end. Um, Let me just, and you have to unmute yourself as well, Tony. We should be able to hear if you speak now. I can't hear you, I'm afraid. Have you got the, your volume up on your computer? I'm afraid I can't hear you, Tony. Can anybody else hear? Amy, can you hear? We've unmuted you this end and you're unmuted your end. It's just a volume issue, I think. No, I'm afraid I still can't hear you. Um, you could put your question in the chat. Hey, can we yeah. see if anyone we can hear anyone else? Yeah, that's Perhaps not, just that. Can you unmute everyone or not? Um, we've only got yeah, a few people in the yeah. in the uh, yeah, we can do that. So, everybody, everybody's unmuted. Hey. Susan, Chris, or Damien, would one of you mind unmuting yourself and just saying something? It's just check we haven't got a sound problem because I can see Tony. Yep, let's take one, two, three. Uh, Damien, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, that's that's really okay. helpful. Um, as as I'm alive. Um, yeah. I know that the the dueling of the A10 is a separate issue, but would that not have any impl implications on these decisions made for um, the parking ride and the uh, transport links? Okay, thanks very much for your question, Damien. Paul, did you want to address that? Uh, yeah, so we're working fairly closely with the the team that is uh, looking at the A10 dueling, uh, and it's not not necessarily dueling anymore. It's the, the work that they're undertaking at the moment is to develop a a lower cost and lower impact option, uh, as directed by the government, uh, which will be thrown in with with those dueling options and assessed. So there is uh, well. It, it, within the, the A10 project team itself, there's kind of a lack of certainty exactly, exactly uh, what the A10 will look like in, in the future because they're quite early on in that process. So where, the way that we're approaching is this, is that the studies that have been done so far that associated with the kind of looking at the, the impact of the new town at Water Beach have set out that you need a, a package of transport measures. One of one of them is the relocation of the station. And <coughs> another is this, the, the improved public transport and active travel uh, infrastructure. 
and the other is uh, changes to the A10 to help reduce congestion. So our sort of understanding with the A10 project team is that we will obviously come first and you know as our project is underway we need to get this this infrastructure in before the new town is built uh, or, or before people are you know starting to move into the new town so that they can use the infrastructure and it becomes kind of a, a kind of maybe a kind of a selling point for the for the new town uh, so we're obviously looking at these options and if the a10 team decide that they they need to eventually do some dueling, then they will need to work around our options or our eventual uh, solution. In fact, one thing that we have we have done is that we have you you know that we've taken both options off the A10, and part of the reason was the technical there was a various technical challenges, uh, various issues with kind of the junctions which maybe Amy can describe slightly better than me but one other factor is that by taking the busway infrastructure away from the from the A10 we kind of leave that uh, corridor intact and with possibilities for you know potential widening if that is what what comes out of the A10 study Okay, thank Amy, you. Do you want to elaborate? Yes. Yeah, Sorry, Tony. Just, 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 on, just on the junctions um, along the A10. So we did we, one of our previous options, as Paul said, looked at, at using the A10 corridor or, or running um, a busway down down that corridor. And as part of those options, we looked at the impact that that would have on the operation of the A10 itself. And there were key kind of pinch points within the route that for a kind of engineering feasibility were more challenging, um, but also caused a lot more delay on the network in terms of general traffic movements. And that caused rerouting of traffic through uh, Land Beach, through Water Beach, Milton and Horningsea as a result. Um, so obviously that's not something that we want to do as part of this study. Um, there's also technical challenges around if you're using the A10 corridor, getting across the A14 um, close to or near to um, or on Milton Interchange. Um, and those are options that we identified for doing that were um, significantly more costly than the options that we're looking at today um, and would mean that the, the kind of business case for the scheme was less likely to stack up in terms of in terms of the, the benefits um, that we're looking at. Uh, thank you. I mean, looking at the West um, option, it seems the most, you know, it seems quite an attractive way to do it. And um, on the cost side as well, it seems a cheaper option as well. So I would be very much more in favour of moving traffic to that that way. So I live in Chittering, so obviously impacted a lot, or just outside of the whole build and what's in the plans. Uh, but the more traffic you moved away from us, the better. <laughs> You're on mute, David. OK, thanks uh, for your um, question and um, answers there. Um, so I'm just going to read out. We've got Tony's putting a question in the chat, guys. So I'll just read it out as I okay. see it and we can answer that. It says the Western route appears to pass Imken village houses adjacent to Woodcock ha House. I think you got close. Yeah. This area was designated a country park around the new science park north of the A14. Comment, please. So, Paul, do you want to start on that one? Yeah, so it's correct. So the, the, the proposal for the Western option, uh, the reason it up, one of the reasons we take it so far west is to avoid all of the uh, fruit farms, polytunnels, etc. Uh, so we've we've looked at avoiding those to the north of Milton Road stroke but lane. It's Milton Road at that point. Uh, and coming in uh, where where we where we do, where you can see it on the map. Uh, across across that field and then down obviously to the busway. The central option also uh, crosses a bit further to the east, but it also goes through the land that is designated as country park uh, within the, the Northern Science Park kind of master plan. And what we have 
done so far is that we have I mean, we've, we've been in quite fairly close contact with the promoters of that that northern science park uh, to ensure that what we are doing uh, is kind of supported by them and doesn't impinge on kind of whatever they're planning and work you know, so the two can work together if and I say if their their uh, proposals ever come to light because I think there's there's obviously the 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 local in the Corfu sites in the last local planning uh, planning process that site wasn't accepted by the, the South Cambridge or Greater Cambridge planning uh, as a as a site to go in the local plan. So uh, obviously there's a bit of work to do before they can bring that forward. And I, I'm not I don't know if it will ever happen or not. I mean it's it's, it's within the green belt. Uh, it seems quite an attractive site, you know, extension to the science science park and close to the busway. So, you know, there's 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 some things going for it. But on the other hand, it will it be quite impactful. OK, thanks, Paul. Um, I think that addresses Tony's question in full. Um, so I just will look through. Uh, did anybody else have a question? Um, for Paul and Amy. OK, um, I don't see anyone's hand up. Yeah, Susan. Uh, Susan, yeah, right, let me. So, so if you unmute yourself, Susan and Yeah, we can hear you. I can hear you, Susan. Um, Thank you. If you like, I'd yes. like to ask your question. Um, they, you, the schemes on this for this are mostly uh, for long distance travel, but the new Water Beach um, houses, I think, were put in partly so they could travel by train to London and Ely. Um, this area is a lot of villages on the edge of London and they don't, none of them have very good transport to anywhere. I was rather hoping that either of the um, that it would actually contact with um, the, the villages the other side of the railway uh, obviously needing a new bridge at Waterbrook Beach if the buses are going to come from from the other side. Um, but also all the the small places. Um, the the plan I saw for the, the park and ride site had uh, almost no bicycle contact, which means that children can't even get to the regional college on the on the bus. At the moment, they go to North Cambridge, and uh, there is a bus from there. Yeah, OK, so. Amy, hey, do you want to just bring the map options up? Yeah, we'll do. Yeah. Do you want me to go back to the park and ride options? Uh, no, no, just bring up the. Uh, the, the busway option. It, the it's busway the options, villages yeah. versus long distance. So. Here we go. Does that come through? Yep, I can yep. see it. So if we look at the map, so obviously the new the, moving the station up to the new town uh, is a project on its own, and that will cater for kind of trips between Waterbeach, well, between Waterbeach and further on, you know, Cambridge North, Cambridge Centre, and in future kind of biomedical campus uh, when when the, the southern station is built. And also onwards onto London. So that the station kind of covers those kind of uh, commuter trips. The busway option is intended to provide kind of the more accessibility to more local trips. Uh, and the two options here that we've got, I mean, obviously we we are the, the aim of this project is linking the new town, which is which will have a large population, kind of a population bigger than Ely when it's all finished. 
So the, the aim of this project is to create that link between the new town and Cambridge and also to try to the secondary kind of uh, priority is to is to perhaps also link with some of the other villages. So, for example, the, the central route kind of links with Land Beach. It also provides links off to Milton, you know, via Land Beach Road. Uh, links to the existing park and ride and then obviously down to the busway where it can either travel eastwards towards Milton Road and Cambridge North Station or it can actually travel it could turn off and travel westwards up to Histon in that direction or in fact it can turn through Orchard Park and access the west of Cambridge so the bus the busway kind of is aimed at providing the infrastructure to to uh, help try to help link the local area better. If, if the park and ride site was within walking distance of the rail station, it would be all right for commuters at the moment. If I was coming in by car from the north, I would go straight down to Cambridge North because it's a it's a half a mile walk in the rain at seven o'clock in the morning. I'd rather go to Cambridge North by car. The the, um, the, 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 the railway station, the Cambridge North yeah. railway station, uh, the, the, the new station at Water Beach will have its own car park. The park and ride isn't for, to provide parking for the railway station. Ah, that does make a difference. Yeah, so... So, so you yeah. could ride your bicycle across the, uh, across the rail, um, the, the water beach, uh, the um, yes, the rough across the railway on that ro very old bridge and cycle cycle to the rail station. That helps, helps a lot. Thank you. Okay. The park and ride sites as well will be accessible by um, walking and cycling. Obviously, when you look at the location of them, some some may lend themselves better to walking and cycling than others, but that's something that we would like feedback on um, and that we will looking at as we develop the park and ride locations mm. in more detail. Yeah, so just to, just to clarify that, so park and ride a, option A is a bit further to the north of the new town. So the, the benefit, the advantage of park and ride A is that it picks up traffic before the traffic you know, that picks up traffic coming from the Ely direction before it arrives at the Water Beach area. And just, there we go. Uh, and if we think to the future, I mean, that that is quite a benefit because eventually the Water Beach area with the new town has the potential to be quite, you know, heavily trafficked. So picking up the traffic before it arrives into this area is, is an advantage. However, option C is kind of closer to existing village of Water Beach, uh, so people can walk or cycle from from Water Beach village and, in fact, from the new town, if they if they wish to pick up park and ride services. It's also very very close to the proposed uh, cycle and walking bridge, active travel bridge. So, so there's a new cycle bridge. Uh, just Amy can point it out on the map, perhaps just to the north of where option C is, which will provide a, a direct link into into the, the new town. Uh, and it will actually come across the top of that where the park and ride is shown uh, and head south towards Cambridge. So kind of the different park and ride options here kind of have got different pros and cons really. Uh, and kind of we're, we're interested to talk to people about kind of what they think about the various options. Thank you. Chris has just okay. put a comment in the chat as well saying that park and ride site A would serve the research park as well potentially, which is short of spaces. Yeah, that's a, that's true. So um, there's just a few questions in the chat here. Yeah, obviously there was that one about the park and ride site. Tony's come back about the science park developers. He's just making the comment that they have purchased land off Butt Lane as access, as access to the new science park. I think we're aware of the, the um, that land purchase but as, as as Paul's already said the site development isn't in the the Greater Cambridge Partner plan, Greater Cambridge planning call for sites at the moment is it so so I think 
that's useful information, but I think what you've said before, Paul, stands, doesn't it? Yeah, so so I wasn't, yeah, we're aware that they have purchased some land. Um, yeah. On the other hand, they are also quite keen for this project to go ahead because it, they see it as supporting their case. I mean, there's no other way of saying it, really. Uh, and therefore, they are keen to work with us to, to kind of find the best solution that also works for them. Uh, and, and I would say, from my point of view, the purpose of this busway is not to serve uh, Cambridge Science Park North or to help it help it gain uh, kind of planning permission or anything like that. The, the purpose is to link Water Beach New Town to Cambridge. Uh, it just so happens that you know, uh, that uh, the, the developer is kind of putting those proposals forward at the same time. Uh, so obviously we have to work together. We have to find we have to make sure what we do is compatible and basically put something in place that kind of you know works works for now and work possibly works you know for the future if something does happen there okay thanks paul so let's just look at some of the other questions in the chat um Question from Chris Amos here says, please consider safe cycling access from Cotland to Water Beach Station and the Research Park. Um, and on a similar vein, Damon's asked, will Chittering ever be included in the future? We're so close to the new town, but I have no safe links. So I don't think either of those are in scope for this project, but they uh, are they, Paul? But they're not, they, but they're no, they're not. not in the scope for this particular project. My understanding, so Amy, correct, do you know, my understanding was there is a link proposed between Chittering and the new town. Um, between Chittering and the new town, I'm not sure, but I between... there was a cycle link that was proposed, not oh, not, not within our project, but I'm not aware of that one from the north. With regard to Cottenham to yeah. Water Beach, uh, we, we know that well. I mean, I live in Cottenham as well, so I know that road, and it, it is probably in you know it is in need of of uh, an upgrade really to provide a, a safe walking cycling link between the two villages. It's not really within the scope of this project, but it is something that it's on the radar of the county council and it's listed as a kind of a priority that needs addressing in the near future subject to kind of funding being found and made available. Okay, thank there you. Is Obviously, a, so, there's a link proposed sorry. to the research park, so an active travel link proposed from Land Beach up to the research park as well as part of the research park proposals. Okay, that's fine. Um, so just a comment here from Chris, he says, my company's been looking at taking buildings in the research park. Um, uh, the trek from the station is causing us a headache with stuff who don't drive. Um, well, I think up, if you look at the proposals that would address improving public transport links between the new Water Beach station and the research park, wouldn't it, Paul? So the eventual, yeah, the eventual uh, proposal is that the infrastructure links links those two. But in the meantime, um, Evan, Evan and Civic providing a shuttle bus between the research think, park and the station. Yeah. I think so. OK, um, just a comment here about site B. Uh, it, so it says Park and Ride B will cause deaths without a radically improved junction. Um, is the plan, Amy, that if we were to go for Site B, that you would have to improve the junction on Green End? Yeah. Beach, uh, yeah. A, 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 a. Yeah. So the link that that junction um, with the A10 and the link on Green End would would need looking at as these options develop further if this one was to get taken forward. So Amy, that is a, it's a good point raised. So for me. Uh, the, the main constraint for Site B is the accessibility and the yeah. exactly what, what has just been highlighted. So uh, what are the advantages of Site B? So the reason that these three sites are on the table is because they've all got strengths and weaknesses. So Site C itself um, is, is particularly kind of susceptible to flood risk. Um, so it kind of it may look the best in terms of access, in terms of proximity to Water Beach Village and the new town, but there's there's definitely flood constraints that we would need to overcome with that site. Site B being slightly further north doesn't have um, the potential for as many flood issues um, on that site. So that's kind of the the inclusion for that is that it's 
it's close to the new town it's close to water beach village and land beach but it doesn't have those potential flood risk issues that site c has Similarly, with the site A to the north, as Paul said earlier, it captures traffic off the A10 before it gets to any of the roundabouts on that southern section of the A10 um, from the research part. But equally, it's close in proximity to Denny Abbey, so there's potential heritage constraints there. So these three sites, I think they've all got their own strengths and weaknesses. So that's why we've included all three of them for consideration within this consultation to make sure that we're taking forward um, the one that is most favoured um, and then we will have to address the challenges associated with each of them. OK, thanks, Amy. Um, just uh, the Tony has come back with a, it's a statement rather than a question, which is the busway will be very disrupted to the village of Impington houses by St Andrew's Way, Woodcock Close and Perchenham and the village college. I think that's rather a statement rather than a question. Um, so I can't see anyone else's hand up, but I can see someone is typing in the chat. So um, as Chris has said, if we get a vote, West Route and P Park and Ride Site A. Well, Chris, actually, the way you participate in this is by going onto our website and filling out the survey form. That's the way by which you can register your preference, both about with which one of the routes, West or Revised Central, and which one of the park and ride uh, sites that you have a, a strong preference for. The survey doesn't take long to fill in. And that's the best way for you to articulate your views, which is what we're very keen for you to do, because that's what this exercise is about. It's trying to find out what local community is interested in. So please take some time and encourage other people to go on and express their views via um, via our website. Um, yeah, I mean, that's I echo what David said. There's also the space for kind of further elaboration and comments, yeah. which which will obviously all get picked up and, and read. Uh, but as Amy, I think, has described, the park and ride for, for sure is, you know, it's fairly close between all, all three sites. Each have got their own strengths and weaknesses. And and therefore the consultation is really important for us to get a kind of a an understanding, you know, of, of any significant objection to any of the sites because that would that would obviously play quite strongly into kind of our our decisions going forward. Uh, and equally with the busway uh, options, both kind of serve the primary purpose of linking the new town to to Cambridge. Uh, but each have got their own strengths and weaknesses. So the western route is is slightly more direct, uh, passes to the west of Land Beach, so it's less disruptive for the village of Land Beach. As Tony pointed out, it does pass closer to Wimpington, although that line is not completely fixed. Uh, it's kind of the line that we think is the best line, but subject to kind of further revision. So there is possibility that we could swing it further away from the from the houses. On the other side, uh, we could also provide a stop at that side of Infington, which would uh, potentially be advantageous for people living in that area. Uh, so that's the western route and then the, the central route, obviously slightly, it passes through Land Beach, so kind of to the east of the main village of Land Beach. Uh, you could provide a couple of stops kind of close to Land Beach with that option. But obviously, it, it kind of a bit more disruptive on the, on the village for, for those people who who think that way. So kind of strengths and weaknesses of both. And that's why we're pretty interested to hear what people have got to say in this consultation. OK, thanks, Paul. That's very helpful. Um, I don't see anyone else chatting. I don't see anybody else put the hand up. So I think thanks for your participation in this online. We are recording this so and it will be put up on our YouTube channel so you can go back and check back things. All the information that we've put out on on this presentation on the presentation is also on the website. There are also three more in-person events. We've had one, two of the in-person events, so there's actually public information and display. So Tuesday, the 21st of February, we're going to be at the St Andrew Centre in Histon in the evening. Monday, the 27th of February, we're going to be at the Baptist Church at Water Beach. And Tuesday, the 7th of March, uh, we we're going to be at the Milton um, Centre by the Rec. Um, so um, those are the those are the three in-person places that uh, in-person events that you're more than welcome to attend. In addition to this, if you want to have a look or ask with more questions, 
Um, there are also also a couple more online events if you are what company you've thought of something and you want to come back to us. But um, as Paul said, we are we are running a survey. We fill that in. There are free text box so you can articulate um, um, all those things. So on that point, I think.